guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna be dismantling our one plant per pot project and we're gonna plant them up for fall. It feels funny even saying that already being in November and we still have summer annuals looking so good. It's been such a mild fall. We've had a couple of nights that have frozen, but no prolonged cold to where our summer annuals, when you get close, they look stressed, but from, you know, not very far away, they look pretty good still. So you can see how these did this year. The whole idea, it was Aaron's idea, he wanted to try just putting one plant, not just one variety, just one four inch plant in each pot to see how they would perform and see if they would fill it up and see if we could do a really striking display for a smaller, with a smaller amount of plants, smaller budget. Um, And so at this point, like, still beautiful color the supertini vista fuchsia you can see that we got lax with our budworm spraying there toward the end the foliage is looking a little yellow but like when you back up you don't really notice all that stuff uh gomfrina is a little bit a little bit uh, sad at this point sparkling amethyst looks pretty good color here but it's starting to kind of fade in the center lady godiva yellow calendulas i might actually pop those in the greenhouse depending on how they look once i get them unearthed from this kind of whole gob uh they typically winter over fairly well for us that way supertunia vista silverberry this one's probably looking the most stressed in terms of leaf color you can see it's just probably waterlogged we've had quite a bit of rain and then our last windstorm kind of broke this plant there and i recently organized this whole area we still had tables sitting in front of the greenhouse we had plants just all over the place i had plants in the greenhouse that can't withstand any kind of heat so if we heat up the greenhouse they need to be outside so i recently did just this huge shift and uh anyway i realized how many beautiful things i have to work with so right here we've got a selection of snapdragons which you've seen me use quite a bit of i had a project in mind that i didn't do this fall and i had ordered accordingly uh, so I've got these gorgeous snaptastic red snapdragons. We've got some cabbage left, some yellow violas. Uh, these are ones I'm just going to be wintering over in here because these actually won't take very much cold, straw flowers and marigolds. And then out back here where we organized all of the shrubs and perennials, I've got some boxwoods. I've got Carex that look really good. And I have a whole bunch of gorgeous hookahs. I have plenty of things I think to create a really fun um, more fall-esque display. And mainly, I wanna get things in here that can withstand more cold than these can. I mean, these are pretty tough annuals as far as annuals go. But once we start getting consistently cold nights, which is eventually going to happen, uh, these will plummet pretty quick. So anyway, I decided today is the day we're gonna take these apart. Now I do have drip running to all of these containers. I'm gonna try to keep that as intact as possible because I don't know looks actually like it's a little short there we go yeah so this drip feeds the urn and there's um drip that goes to all these containers from water on the inside so i'm going to try to keep that all intact so that next spring if we decide to keep all the pots the same we can just turn the water uh on and it'll work again i got got this one you like oh that's beautiful you have this one thank you buddy you have like that square shape or the circle string yeah this is a german German wax ivy. Yeah, you have to have that. I would love to have that. Thank you, bud. Yeah, you have that. Benjamin's playing in the studio. It's such a nice day out here today. I just tossed the door open. Have you been measuring stuff? No, I'll just play with my car. You're playing with your car. How much is that? Is that the right size? Fourteen size of it. Oh. Three size. All right, let's get these cleaned out. Okay, got them cleaned out. I did end up putting the calendula. I needed Aaron's help to get them in here because they were quite heavy. This one in particular though looks so good. Look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. This one is a little bit like, oh, on one side, but overall, I think they're gonna do really well in here. And they look pretty clean. Calendula's usually an aphid magnet. 
but I'm not seeing any evidence at all of any aphid activity, so that's a good thing. I put another container in place of where the calendula was, so I'm gonna run drip to that. In fact, I brought some drip supplies out here. I'm just gonna run it up, even though I won't run the ring today of brown drip. I'll run a um, just a lineup so we've got it there and just put a plug in it. And I did have to break the drip and a couple of these because the whole entire root ball wanted to come out. So I'll just clip this here and put a plug in for now. And then next season when we get ready to plant them, I'll just redo just the little bits that need to be done at that point. But you can tell like the gomfrina didn't take up very much root space. Super tunias never do. Um, this pot was not very taxed at all. I had super bells in there first, it died, evol evolvulus after that, and it didn't really do much. So the plant was just right at the surface and most of it's still like fluffy soil. I had strawberries in both containers on both sides and they both died. So anyway, that pot pretty much sat like that all season. And then let's see, the other container supertunia was in that one. So really wasn't a whole lot of roots. The salvia pretty much came out. Most of that soil is from the bottom of the sunflower pot. And then on this side, kind of the same story, the whole salvia though, and whole sunflower root ball came out for those. So anyway, I've got some soil. We're going to get these all filled, topped up. For the ones that I'm not replacing all the soil, I'm going to be putting biotone fertilizer in there, just kind of recharge it. And then I'm going to fix drip on all of these so that they're all set to go. After that, we can plant. All the containers have been prepped so the drip I worked on some of which I just capped like this right here and then I'll run new drip in the spring some just stayed and I'll probably swap this out in the spring too I don't know if I really like the rings that connect to each other it makes it kind of hard to plant as opposed to coming off of a straight coupler here instead of a T so like coming up with your black and then doing a straight coupler going right into the brown and then just having a plug on the end rather than it coming back around. That way you can kind of like, I don't know, it's scalable. It's easy to move around in the pot and manipulate. Um, I did put biotone and new soil. I either topped up the pots with new soil and biotone or put completely new soil in depending on the container. And same on this side. So now the fun part, I'm just gonna start pulling plants and setting them on top of the pots to kind of try to create some kind of a pretty arrangement here. I was gonna plant these out in the landscape, but I think these hypericums should come in here. Oh, it's so pretty. done I love how they turned out and I was racing because I thought I was gonna lose light and I really wanted to show you what they look like 
today, right when I was done with them. I didn't plant these up identically. I used all of the same plants. Most of the pots are the same, but I potted this pot here and that pot right here similarly because the pot on this side, if I were to do it balanced, the pot on this side is tucked way back in there and you don't really see the plants in there as, as much. And I didn't want to not see the hypericum. So it's called Pinot. It's a type of St. John's wort really unique blooms, beautiful berries. So I wanted to see that on both sides. So we can see it right here in this container. And then if we go over here onto the other side, you can see it right here in this container. Now I'm going to attempt to identify all the plants in these pots. I might have to correct myself on the screen, but in this one, we have the Hypericum, the Pinot Hypericum. We've got a mahogany monster hookra, one of my favorites. I love the shape of the leaves. The leaves are huge. The older leaves are really deep burgundy and the new ones are kind of like a, I don't know, they're a red, but like with an orange flare to them, I just love it. Uh, we've got a cabbage here and then some of the snapdragons. This container here, which I need to water everything to clean the soil off, but I've got a spearmint hookra. Uh, and I don't know if I already mentioned this, but these are the best at returning really nicely every year for us. Not all hookahs do, this one does. Snaptastic Red Snapdragon. I think this is a Euphorbia called Glacier Blue. Might be wrong on that. This is the Crane White Kale. It comes up on longer stalks, really beautiful. Just uh, Snapdragons in this pot. One Hookera called Peach Berry Ice in this container. This is a Mount Bruno Boxwood right here. And I had these in little containers inside the greenhouse and they were pushing themselves out of the containers because they had been in there too long. So they are gonna be so happy to be in new pots. Makes me happy just to see them here. I went ahead and just underdressed or top dressed, not underdressed, top dressed the uh, soil with pine cones. These pine cones came from our blue spruce that fell down. In this pot up here, I have a Carex. Is this like, it's not Evergold. Is it Evergold? I don't know. I've had them in containers for a lot of years. They just keep going from container to container, tough as nails. In this container, we have two peach berry ice hookahs. I had one kale, it looks much like the crane whites, but it's a different variety, pigeon white, I think. In this container, we have another hookara, and then we've got, I think this is a hookarella. It has a little bit of a different shaped leaf on it. We've got more crane white kale, snapdragon. In this container, we've got one of the overdom calamagratus, spearmint hookara, and then a sprinter boxwood. And then in the urn, we have a cherry truffles hookra, sprinter boxwood, more of the crane white kale and snapdragon. I don't know if I got all those names right. This side, much the same. So just a tiny bit different, you know, this pot and this pot are different. So this one's got a sprinter, spearmint, hookra, a cabbage and snapdragons. And I don't think, I don't think I did anything really different. Now I did put some Scarlet Curls Willow branches in this pot to begin with, and then I just wasn't digging it. It was just making it look too messy. There's a lot going on in these containers right here. And I didn't need the addition of just something else um, in there, but oh, I'm just so happy with it. I'm happy because I'm utilizing the plants and they're not just sitting in the greenhouse. I never want to do that with plants. There. All of these containers will be on an every two week watering schedule throughout the winter months. If it's been especially wet for some reason, we'll skip the watering, but typically every two weeks we go out and check all the containers, splash a little water on the root system, not to make them really wet, but just to keep the roots slightly damp. Um, the worst thing you can do if you're trying to overwinter perennials and shrubs, which I used a lot of, is to let them dry out. So that two week schedule works really well for us. Of course, for the least amount of risk, you wanna choose things to put in pots uh, for overwintering that are rated two zones colder than your current growing zone. So like I'm a six, grow zone six. So it's safest for me to choose things that are zone four and lower. I didn't do that with all the things that are in these pots. I typically have good luck, but I think it's because they don't dry out. These are also fairly protected. They're on the south side of the greenhouse. So they soak in a lot of heat. There's arbs, you know, the wall of arbs here. There's a big tree, a, a willow tree right in front of me. So, you know, they're not as exposed as they could be. And that's it, you guys. I'm really happy to have a new look out here. It just looks clean and tidy. I like to be able to see the containers and it's just, they're, they're beautiful. And I love seeing the plants up here in containers, like 
arranged rather than just sitting on the ground behind the greenhouse or on tables in the greenhouse. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Bye.